Jackson right now, Legislative Affairs Director for the Virginia Shooting Sports Association. Mr. Dave Adams is on the program. Dave, how are you, sir? I'm great, Cam. Thanks for having me on. Well, of course we're going to have you on. Yesterday being Election Day in the uh, state of Virginia. And, and Dave, do, do you mind telling me here, um, what's the makeup of the uh, state Senate after the, uh, the elections yesterday? 21 Republicans, 19 Democrats. What was the makeup of the uh, Virginia State Senate before the elections yesterday? 21 Republicans, 19 Democrats. So the the good news is, Dave, uh, that the grassroots really did get out there and vote. Uh, they got out there. They were they were talking with their neighbors. They were talking with their friends. And it all kind of came down. I, I shouldn't say it all came down because here's the thing. No matter where you lived in this district, uh, if you were volunteering, you made an impact. It was just that the last numbers we got uh, last night were from the Powhatan area. And at the time, Dan Gecker uh, was ahead in the vote totals by about 3,000. But the turnout uh, in the western part of the 10th Senate District, the uh, the rural area of Powhatan, uh, it really came through. I mean, voter turnout, it seemed, was really, really strong in that area. I can't say enough about the voters in Powhatan County, and especially gun owners. You know, it's um, I think the best comment I saw last night when I was keeping up with things was former Attorney General Jerry Kilgore when he says, you don't campaign on taking away guns in Powhatan. <laughs> clearly not. Uh, clearly not, because, you know, I mentioned this um, in 2012. Mitt Romney won that district. I think I, think I got this stat from you. Uh, Dave, in the Twitter feed last night, 2012, Romney won that district by 7,200 votes. But that was a presidential election year. Uh, uh, Sturdivant needed to make up about uh, 3,000 votes. He did that and, and more. But that just shows you that level of turnout. They were talking about 30% turnout statewide, maybe, maybe less than 30% turnout statewide. There were a lot of races that were uncontested races. This was not one of them. And clearly, there was not a great deal of voter apathy in this district. No, and they actually had a lot of uh, local races that were generating interest in Powhatan County, and I'm sure that helped as well. Um, the, the turnout, you know, everybody refers to the, the type of election we had yesterday as an off-year off election. Uh, yesterday's turnout in Powhatan was about what it was in 2014, and I think we all know what kind of uh, election last year's was in um, uh, voter uh, excitement. Uh, yeah, and so, you know, this wasn't necessarily um, uh, voter excitement that brought him out, but it was, uh, uh, I, I don't know, may, maybe it was, Dave, maybe it was a little bit of excitement to, to, to get out there and to vote uh, against uh, Michael Bloomberg's anti-gun agenda. It, it certainly was a motivation, I think. I, I, you know, with every one of those ads that ran on TV, was, was there somebody in the Powhatan area who was inspired to actually go and vote against Bloomberg's uh, hand-picked candidate? Well, you know, the pundits, whether it be the Times-Dispatch editorial board or Paul Goldman, who is a uh, uh, political commentator, former aide to both uh, former governors Doug Wilder and Mark Warner, both of those, you know, both of those folks, the Goldman and, and the RTD editorial staff, credited the uh, blowback from the Bloomberg ads as helping to drive turnout in Powhatan. So, Dave, you know, again, Michael Bloomberg was really hoping that today would be the day that he could say, look, uh, we, we showed last night that politicians can uh, stand up to the NRA. You don't have to be afraid of uh, taking on the gun lobby. You can you can speak about these issues. Uh, we're going to give you an issue that that polls really well. Uh, we're going to give you just a, a, a ton of money. Uh, you can do this, politicians. Just stand with us, and we'll stand with you. And instead, I, I think, you know, again, the message was uh, was pretty clear here. Uh, yeah, uh, you, Bloomberg can give you a lot of money, and that may actually be harmful to your cause. Uh, I think that's absolutely right. I think not only Bloomberg money, but, you know, the uh, Gabby Giffords, gun ban group came in and was going to drop money into four specific races that were talked about earlier in October. And, uh, you know, if you want to talk about what anti-gun money can do for you in an election, uh, the four races, which included the uh, Gecker 
tournament race here in the Richmond area, the Parish race up in Northern Virginia in Prince William County, Dick Black's race in Loudoun, and the race down in Tidewater with uh, incumbent Senator Frank Wagner, uh, they ended up winning only one of the four. So I don't think they can make a good case that uh, it's a safe thing to run on gun control. No, I, I think you're uh, you're right about that, Dave. And, and in fact, you know, I, I know that they are talking about the Northern Virginia race, the 29th uh, Senate District, um, where they spent one point five million dollars. But here's the thing: that was a, a a Democrat seat going into the election, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it it stayed a a Democrat seat. So you know, we can we can talk about whether or not Northern Virginia. Uh, is bluing up, uh, so to speak. Uh, you know, has it tr- trended from purple uh, to blue even out into the uh, western exurbs? And in fact, I'd be kind of curious to get your thoughts on this. But I, I got to tell you, as far as the the issues go, uh, it, it certainly seemed like uh, in reading a lot of the, uh, the 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 post commentary, talking with folks that I know in that district. Uh, there weren't a lot of of people who were out there uh, saying, you know, I'm voting for. Uh, McPike because of uh, his support for gun control. It didn't seem like that was really an issue that was resonating even in the 29th district. Yeah, and you know, that district, I believe, went 62% for um, Barack Obama in 2012. And with all that extra money from Bloomberg, McPike only won with 54% of the vote. Now, granted, wow. that, is, that is a decent majority, but it's still less than what the Democrats got in a presidential race. Uh, you know, just a couple of years ago. Talking with uh, Dave Adams, the Legislative Affairs Director for the Virginia Shooting Sports Association. How big a, uh, a loss is this for Terry McAuliffe, Dave? Because, you know, one of the subplots to this was not only McAuliffe wanting to uh, show that, that he could have an influence in statewide elections, uh, something he failed to do. Uh, but this is, you know, in, in many ways, I think, an audition for, uh, for Hillary Clinton. See, look what I can do for you, Hillary, next year in delivering Virginia. Uh, for your campaign? I think it's definitely a loss for McAuliffe. Number one, he will not be able to get his agenda through the General Assembly uh, the next two years. He wanted to push gun control, and even though he knew it was going to be dead if he got out of the Senate going over to the House, just the fact that he would be able to flip the Senate and push and possibly get some bills out of the Senate would be something he could you know, likely crow about. He can't do that now. Um, now, I will say that if he vetoes any bills, he also uh, will be able to probably sustain those vetoes. So there is uh, a small bit of bad news in that um, that we weren't able to pick up additional seats. But the fact is he can't do what he wants to do, uh, and so he can't go out there and say, Hillary, I can, I can help you uh, look at what I did for my own state senate this year. You know, and as you say, Dave, um, McAuliffe could, uh, could could veto pro-gun bills. Uh, it, it, it's, you know, likely that uh, those vetoes would be sustained. But uh, do you think that we will see, look, certainly if McAuliffe had been able to get an anti-gun state Senate, he would have used that body to pass uh, anti-gun legislation and then send it over to the House uh, and and put political pressure on the House to, uh, to do something with those uh, anti-gun bills. Do you think that we will see the uh, the reverse of that. Will we see the legislature go ahead and send pro-gun bills to McCullough's desk saying, listen, go ahead and veto the, the, these bills uh, that would allow people uh, to exercise their right to keep their arms. Go ahead and veto these bills that would enable people uh, to use a firearm in self-defense uh, and, and and go ahead and, and, and run the risk of uh, uh, casting these very unpopular vetoes in a state that has just proven itself to be pretty fond of its right to keep and bear arms. I think you could see some uh, pro-gun legislation hitting his desk. We saw it last year, and, and they weren't really bills that were controversial. There was uh, there was a bill that would have standardized uh, NFA uh, firearm uh, and accessories that went to his desk that came out of the state Senate, a, a more moderate state Senate than what the House of Delegates is. Uh, there are a couple other bills that he vetoed. So, yeah, I think you could see it, and it's not an election year next year. Usually when a legislature gets skittish, it's during an election year. They don't want to do anything that can be used against them. Uh, but see, there we go back to it, Dave, because, right, gun control wasn't supposed to be something that could be used against them. Gun control was supposed to be something that was going to propel them to victory. And, uh, and now that, that narrative has kind of been obliterated by the uh, good people of Powden. I think that um, 
it was going to be an interesting session next year, and, and things will start gearing up, and you'll start seeing some bills drop. And I don't think that Terry uh, McAuliffe is going to shy away from trying to push some gun control bills because I think he owes Michael Bloomberg. He was the one that was responsible for getting that money to come into the state, and he's going to have to do a little payback. Even though he may not be able to get the bills passed, he's going to at least have to show he makes an effort. Uh, I think you're right about that, Dave. Listen, I appreciate you coming on the program, and, and really – Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for uh, everything that the Virginia Shooting Sports Association does. Uh, if you are a gun owner in the state of Virginia, I hope that you are a member of the Virginia Shooting Sports Association. And we've got, again, we've got a year before the uh, presidential elections. We've got the statewide elections in, uh, in, in Virginia next year. So there is certainly room for you to be involved no matter where you live, right? You don't have to live just in the 10th Senate District. There are going to be a lot of competitive areas of the state next year. Absolutely, and I, and I want to say thanks to you, Cam, and NRA News for helping us get our message out to uh, Virginia uh, gun owners. Uh, listen, it is my pleasure and privilege, and uh, appreciate your time today, Dave. We look forward to doing this again very soon. Thanks a lot, Cam. All right, David Adams, Legislative Affairs Director for the Virginia Shooting Sports Association.